this is what we're making. My plan is that I'm doing um, three separate videos, possibly four. I'm just about to finish um, with the end of the binding. So this is it really. It starts off uh, in terms of construction. It has three pockets on the front, two packets, two packets, two pockets on the back. Um, it has three on the front it's got three pockets and then three internal pockets but they're not actually pockets that go to the bottom they are bellowed dividers i believe so you can actually put like a um, coffee cup carton or a jar or anything in there and then you can put your pens in or brushes or sewing things and uh, it just gives you quite a bit of different options having them that they're not restricted at the bottom and then it's quite wide inside and on the other side so the, if the front is the one with three pockets and three pockets there but you can turn it round and have it the other way if you like so the back has got two pockets at the front and then two of the dividers which are a little bit wider so you can put something quite large in there if you wanted to and and then you have so you're making it as a quilt sandwich and you're lining it's all fully lined because you're doing it as a quilt sandwich you can always fast forward bits if it's taking too long to get to where you need to so i hope you enjoy the video see you again bye thank you for watching good morning it's susan at seaside stitches and this is part three of by Annie Catchall Caddy. <laughs> By Annie Catchall Caddy. Um, just overview, bit of a sew along, bit of a. It's just the third part of my journey on this bag. And we're nearly there. So I've got the front and the back ready. I'm going to get cracking in a minute. So I've got to get this, which is the bottom and the sides to accommodate these on each side and just sew along with a quarter inch seam and that sounds really good doesn't it but it's a dimensional bag so it's going to be all a bit of a twist so see how I go on okay I'm going to get cracking now I hope this is videoed see you in a bit I've folded the front in half and put a pin in to find the center at the bottom the back in half and put a pin in to find the center at the bottom. I've marked the centers on the strip that's going to be the actual bottom of the bag. Although that looks crooked the way I'm holding it, they are across from each other. Okay, I'm just uh, showing the edges, the raw edges now, that are going to have to be bound. So this is the catch-all caddy 2.0 and I'm just up to the last section which is binding these very thick edges. So. As you can see, quite uh, meaty some of these. Move it round. Oops. So, wish me luck. <laughs> and I have to start with the bag, the back of the bag body on the machine bed. So, and the binding goes up over the edge and down again. And it's like a continuous loop. So, See how we go. Ooh. Okay, apologies on a number of counts. Um, well, one, I've been out in the drizzle and my hair is like some kind of frizzy 
bush but there you go I have to go on with it um, I'm going to try and show you the kind of <laughs> difficulties I'm going to be under because this is the top, the front of the bag the caddy with three three pockets I have to start with the back of the bag on the bed of my machine and I'm just trying to work out am I right with that yes because I want to start and end it at the back on the back I have to have the, the part with the curved piece downwards and so I'm going to have to be putting my binding on there and rounding off to there I think yes so that I can finish it on the front edge well it will be the back but what I mean is on the outer outside edge but this is going to be on the inside of the bag if you can grasp what I mean the the inner part where it's going to be on the bottom on the, on the sides but we're going to finish it off by putting the final stitching from the front through so I don't know if you gather in that or even if it's videoing. Okay, I just beautifully demonstrated how to put start your binding off if you're not going to do that fancy joining up at the beginning method and realised I'd done it wrong. So I'm now starting that again. So when I do binding, just inspired by uh, Susan Clare at Gourmet Quilter, I do this. So I start with a square a square edge, I fold in at right angles to the join to make a right angle triangle and then that makes a little cosy nest for when I join the binding that's going to come round the whole project. So that's how I see it, it's a little cosy nest. And it'll know it's come home when it gets to that point. I'm just going to put, I'm not going to put a pin in it. It'll, it will murder me. Those pins are vicious. I'm just going to pop that there. So, I'm sewing with the bag body, the back of the bag body on the machine, on the bed of the machine. And then I'm going to wrestle with the rest of this. <laughs> and all I'm doing is following instructions from Bayani. She doesn't do this method of joining. So I'm just going to do this. And this is where it's a fight. Because I've got several layers of fabric. I have uh, two layers of soft and stable. And possibly four layers, layers of fabric. I'm going to come as near to that point as I can. I've got my fingers stuck. Right. So I'm going to the clips are just so that I don't fling it over the edge. So there are several things I'm fighting with here and I'm not going to talk because I've already done it wrong because, because I was talking. So I'm going to go for it. Going with a quarter inch seam, put it onto 3.5 um, stitch length. That's temporary till I just get started, and then I'll assess whether a three will do because I need it to hold it on. So I think 3.5 would be a bit um, loose, but we don't know yet. So, my main thing now is I'm trying to keep level with this edge or even as they say in the states um, I'm trying to stay level with that edge and just put my foot down a little bit not run over my uh, my fingers and get it flat enough just to keep that level and flat and those two edges where I've folded it over exactly in sync so I need my 
needle down function. So you just kind of baste this down because it's going, you're going to go over it again when your next lot of binding comes round. What we'll do for that? I'll just backstitch and wish I hadn't if I have to take it out. Right, so I come out now. See, if you can see with your beady eyes, I've already gone a bit skew, but I might need to refine that afterwards. And also, it doesn't look massively large, that length of stitch, does it? Given that it's going through all these layers. Now, I'm going to be fighting with the end of my board um, because of this, the straps will get on it and all sorts. And that is the biggest issue I have with doing these bags, these three-dimensional bag, these dimensional bags with the foam layer and they, it fights you, it fights in all directions, and oh my goodness, you need some muscle rub at the end of the day. Right, once I get this anchored, I'm not going to speak, because, <laughs> see you've got four layers there, I've got four layers of soft and stable, because I've got pockets as well. Three layers, three layers of soft and stable, but that's six layers of fabric, isn't it? So this is just for the initial anchoring because you have to move it about all the time anyway. So right, wish me luck, and here we go. I'm gonna leave that stitch at. Gonna leave it at three point five, am I? Have I left enough to come down there? No. There we go. Right. So my biggest fight is to keep that edge of that foot on that. And I can't put an edge foot on because of going around the corners, it gets really complicated. So, here we go. Let's get sewing. Hope there's not too much swearing, but I can mute it when I edit. And the Bionis stiletto, which Anna uses, can drive me mad really sometimes because I haven't got enough hands. I'm all this patting it down and so when I need it I'll use it but then it usually is bounced off the table have my speed just not as fast as a, as it will go because so I've got some control over it but I just do a few stitches at a time now I'm not sure last time I did this level I think I put a denim needle in and I haven't I've got a large quilting needle but I'm not sure if it won't stand up to it I'll change I'll have to change it I have to try not to get any creases around the edge. So I can take that off. And you just got to watch for it being swung out over the the precipice. So I've got pockets here, I've got seams here, I've got a big lump of thinking of stuff here that I have to kind of ease out and show who's boss, as Annie says. So as long as that bit there is flattened and I can get that onto it, 
sufficiently well to curve round that corner without a pleat then I'm doing well this is where I need it really It's going to scratch me. You can anticipate now that there's going to be a pleat in my in my binding if I oof, manage to avoid the pleat in the body. <laughs> I have to keep laughing because it's. There you go. Look at the thickness of that. I don't know if you can see that, but. I must just ease that pleat out of the way. There we go. Just three stitches at a time, but then, like I said, my bag handle now is caught on that side. You can definitely say you're kind of up against it. And it, you think you're doing really well, and then you realise you've moved away from the edge. See, like that. Once you get that past the actual corners, you're not too bad. Ah, now then, am I coming up? I must be. Because there's a bit where I have to come up. Right, and then I think I go, I loop across and go back down and then come up again and then loop across and go back down again and then meet myself on the way back. Going to examine the video. I'll come up to this bit and then work it out. No, because I must go down there. Yes, that will work. With us engineering. Okay. I'm sure if you're doing it, you may have mo motored along very nicely by now, but I need to make sure, Ooh, not that one. And as predicted, my bayon is stiletto has disappeared. It does have this thing where it stops it rolling off a wooden or a half surface, hard surface, but it just jumps itself off. Not sure if that's a rude. There we go. Oh no, don't you start. My stupid fingers are going to start being wonky. Now then, there we go. No. Nope. See, it looks like my foot is up. But it's down. But it's worth making sure. It's pushing it all off the edge. Pushing it off the cliff. There we go. around there.
this extra pocket is trying to push itself out. Now then, that's going to knock itself across. I want it level. Those match more or less as well as they can. I don't want that to be skewed up there and then it, it won't be right. Will it? It's Christmas Eve, folks. And trying to play catch up on what I'm supposed to be doing. Oh no, what have we done? No. Something. We'll see in a minute. Still got my needle, so it's not broken it. Now I have to find out what I do at this point. Don't sew on your own hand. Something I definitely don't want to do. Oh, it's stuck on the back. <laughs> oh, my fingers becoming troublesome. Right, let's get that to that point. Stop now. I think I have to measure something. I'll pause. Okay, so I've I've continued. Just keep going back to the. There is an add-on video that you get with it. So, um, I've got my binding sewn on so far. I've come round the edge, the first edge. Obviously, I'm going to have to refine this, but it doesn't matter for now as long as I get it attached. And then I've come up to the edge. And. Sorry, I was working that way around. So I've come up to the edge and then there is a gap between that uh, uh, for the sides so that the binding is loose on each side, not attached to anything and can act as a little carry handle or um, just so that you can manoeuvre it about. Anyway, so there it is. So I've come up the side of the... Oh, that looks like I've missed it. Anyway... Um, when I got to the end, I need to go back to that as well, I, I put a ruler in, put a, a flower head pin on so that I would know that's my mark and then now I'm bringing the front of the caddy onto its, uh, the, putting the front of the caddy, oh, I can't even say it, onto the <laughs> machine bed, untangling the straps as I go and having it so that this will now come down <laughs> in this side. It's like some Chinese puzzle. Now I'm just avoiding that because under there, no matter how regularly I clean it, just sometimes you get sort of oily dust under there and it's just such a nightmare when you're not realizing and it just gets on something and this t just now is not the time to put a cloth under and deal with it <laughs> i've not got enough hands okay so, so i'm gonna have another fight now um okay it's a lot of fun isn't it making this bag i bet you really really enthused <laughs> It doesn't look anything like as big as hard as this when Annie demonstrates it. But then she has been making them for 10 years. Right, I'm going to lift that up. And I need to put my bag up to it. And as many layers as I can get under it. There we go. So that I'm not just... But I think I went off at the edge on the 
other side of it, which I just need to repair. It's fine. There we go. <laughs> I'm glad I can laugh at this stage. Right. Christmas time. There we go. On do you go? Yes. Yes. Right, now I need to just go back to my 3.5. Because while I was doing the binding that's going to be in the air, I reduced my stitch length to 2.5. Right. Okay. Let's get you back on track. Try not to get stabbed by this wonderful binding method of Annie's. Okay. Over another bump. Oh, 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 it doesn't like that, does it? It doesn't like that. It's going to break in a minute. Okay. seem to be in a knot underneath but we will see now often if it does that judder wait a minute no it's gone out of line ah because i moved i took it off the needle down a bit didn't I? okay if it judders again it will snap the needle so Keep far enough away so it doesn't stab me in the eye and I have got my glasses on. Foot down. Yeah, when it gets in um, a thread jam, it does all that juddering and you can't stop it until it's decided to stop. And uh, that's when it does itself some damage. <laughs> Talk about it as if it's alive and it makes these choices itself. Right, here we're coming to another thick part. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry, the lighting is shocking. Um, and I'm doing well just to... You yeah, see, there's four layers there of soft and stable because I've got the pocket from... The back, the oh, never mind. Yes, right. I'll just put a few more stitches down here before I turn. Oh, it's not sounding very happy, is it? Right now, then. Oh, don't you get up there. This is our lovely fight that we're going to have. I have used kind of a, a, a hessian kind of canvasy kind of a fabric. The linings are both just quilt cotton, but quilting cotton. But this is a bit heavy, this fabric, but I'm managing so far. Shuffle around the bend and all its corners and its pleats and its seams. It's got a seam where the pocket's been added. It's got so much for me not talking. I've never shut up. See, some people have lovely restful Christmas Eves. No, I don't think they do. I think they're in the kitchen with sweat rolling down their back. What have they got the all the cooking to do. No, thank you. Not a bit interested in that. Right. One of the benefits of not eating meat or not eating much meat at all, you don't have to do several hours of roasting. Now then, have I got, no, didn't have. Let's see what's under there. 
Okay. Fingers crossed again and keep mine out of the way. See it up my f right, okay. Oh darling, you're struggling, aren't you? If I had my other foot on, it would uh, it has a little push button that assists it over the I've had to go and take some painkillers for my hands. It's not funny, really. Come out, the bag's stuck, the handles are stuck again. <laughs> Maybe I should have been sensible and put them somewhere. I don't know where I could have put them. They would have hung into where I was going to sew. Just wondering what's down here. Oh, yeah. Because there's also the bottoms of the... Um, now we're going to call them bifold doors. <laughs> no, that's not. Bellows divide dividers. There are bellows dividers. Right. Inside. So the seam of that is there. It's not in my sewing way, but it's in my way for moving the fabric. Moving the bag. Right. Quiet, Susan. Concentrate. This is a science bit. Concentrate. Right, going off the edge. Oh, it's only my finger stinging it. I haven't done anything to it. It's just. This just <laughs> slightly protesting. Right. I shouldn't even be sewing this at all. I've got a great pile of stuff to take for Christmas. Well, that I've not, some I've not started and some I've not finished to take for Christmas, which is... We're not going until Monday. Whoops, there we go. We're stuck on something else now. Oh, the buckle. <laughs> the buckle's now stuck. Oh, God. If there's anybody still with me, thank you for staying. <laughs> See, it's good to have someone, an ordinary person doing these things because it can make you feel really good about yourself when you can achieve things yourself. I've just seen some silly fool mucking about <laughs> for an hour and a half, just going round a bag with a bit of binding. Here we go. Okay, so what I didn't do was go and get myself a cup of hot chocolate. What I did do is tip all my needles out and make a right mess in my needle box. But I did find myself a jeans needle and I put in a 16. Um, and then I changed my thread and I just got some ordinary fabric and I gave it a long run of just several lines of free stitching. So that it wasn't too thick, it wasn't too arduous, and uh, just let it have a run, really, on its own. <laughs> so what I did do instead, I changed the needle and I just refined that that seam um, a little bit. But it is struggling. It did struggle to come round that, that uh, corner with all those seams and creases and everything, la layers. So um, it juddered a lot, and I'm just going to come off now. And see if I can think of a better solution needle wise. I think it's telling me that I've got the wrong foot on, but my normal universal pressure foot, it has a little button that you can help. You can press it and it can go over thicker edges, but I can't use it on here while I'm trying to get around that corner. It's too wide a foot. So I'm going to have a break now. It's getting on for five o'clock. And it's Christmas Eve. <laughs> I've got millions of jobs to do, as in sewing jobs. And I shouldn't be messing about with this, but 
anyway I wanted to finish the damn thing okay so I've still got to come round this top bit and then go down across the second side and come down without twisting it come down this side and then meet myself so it's not very far and I might do it a bit later on but I need a break okay <laughs> I'm doing a very good job of not throwing it out the window you know okay thank you it's actually Christmas day <laughs> why would I not be sewing well, Glasses down somewhere, where have I put my glasses? There they are. I'm still fighting with this and picked it up again. I want to get it finished. Since I last spoke to you, I have um, changed the needle, changed the tension, changed the needle again, redone a little, a small section and lost my place right um reassessed something and i'm not far from getting to this edge and then i'll have to go through even more layers when i turn that over <laughs> so that's another two layers of fabric so let's get this all done out of the way before my Christmas lunch. Look at that beauty. Now that is a, a several quilt sandwich. <laughs> oh my goodness me. So, now back to putting the curved side, side that had the curve cut from it, on the bed of the machine. I have to pick it up on this side one of the biggest things is getting it underneath the foot where it doesn't I've got my fingers too where it doesn't have that's it, any of it turned back on itself where I can reach the threads where I can ooh, identify my stitch line <laughs> which I can't no, because that is still underneath the foot. Oh, gosh. Can't even find the foot to extend it back up. A bit more. <laughs> I'm just feeling my way around here. There we go. That's it. Oh, gosh. Get down, get down. So, move it back. Position it over the previous stitching. Threads out of the way. Oh, I've re-threaded it. I have I'll check the bobbin. I've got enough in the bobbin. I've cleared any back any. Oh, when the last needle I pulled out had a it had really smashed itself to pieces, and it had a little hook on the end. No wonder it wasn't performing very well. And that was the second jeans needle, I think. I'm now got a quilting needle. I tried a Microtex just in case it could pierce its way through the foam better, but that gave up the ghost immediately, almost immediately. Right, the foot down, although you can't tell the difference, it is down. I need my needle down pro function and I need to set off. This is a problem. Keeping my fingers out of the way of all the... If I can keep those away from the needle, that's fine. But I'm keeping them away from whatever <laughs> happens when it bounces about. I'm going to use my tweezers, not my finger. Okay. Right, so I need this edge foot still against this fabric. And that is one of the most difficult things. So we're off again. No, we're not, because I'm on the wrong... <laughs> oh on the wrong setting I want 4.5 and I want 3.5 so 
So, let's see. Should be okay because I'm on the. <laughs> I've only just started and I'm complaining. There we go. I'm doing it stitch by stitch now. I'm going to stop and I'll readjust it. Oh, that's why I pulled it out last time was because I'd done about an inch and a half where I hadn't put the foot down so I just had looped thread underneath. Just put these on just to hold it slightly while I'm gathering all these different layers. I have managed to clean my, clear my dining table so that we can actually eat off it. And it's been about six months, eight months since I've done that. It's shocking, isn't it? How we turn everything over to sewing. I know lots of you can't do that because you've got other commitments and the handle's got stuck again. It's hard to believe that that, that, that foot is actually down. I looked online about sewing through thick fabric and any tips. But most seem to just assume that you're not actually sewing through th thick, thick th fabric like this, but just uh, doing a thick wool seam or something. And talking about making a bridge from the back so that you level. Well, it's not like that, is it? It's just not like that at all. Right, there we go. Might need to take that out. Don't want to have that too baggy. Oh, I don't hope, because I'm on the last, the last run. Now I need to get this flatter on the bed. against the side there we go too many things too many things but I've got my foot down it's slightly on the edge but let's go with it right come along bag behave yourself don't sew over that Something else is stuck at this side. Uh, yep, a buckle. One of the metal fastener things has got stuck underneath here. Well, I can't say it's been a breeze. <laughs> Putting this part binding on. I think the biggest thing I've learned since coming back to sewing. It's just that I've got more patience than I thought. You know, at one time, when I was much younger, I would have chucked this <laughs> to one side. Never wanted to see it again. Right, now then. I'm going to just 
cut this massively too long, which is fine. And then, oh for goodness sake, for goodness sake, one, two. What is there in there? It's like I've got my lunch in there or something. It's the several layers of inner pockets. The bellow dividers strike again. Now then. Um, Erica Arndt. Ardent. Uh, anyway, she does a lot of quilting. I spotted, she was doing a tutorial yesterday. Well, she was doing a tutorial for Christmas that I spotted uh, a pot holder, just a quick um, quilt as you go pot holder but she did this kind of um, joining method and I thought oh it's not just me then but she just chopped it off and covered it up so what I prefer to do just to reduce the bulk and just to make it more difficult for myself is to make a diagonal cut oops now I may not be leaving that much on I'm not leaving that much on I've no space to do anything It really doesn't matter how I cut it, except then I hope I haven't cut it too high because then it will stick out. But I haven't, I haven't. See, so that I've only got one layer there and one layer there to add, rather than just do an extra double layer to add. Now, I shall just undo a couple of these. Oh. This is normally quite simple, but I have to make it more difficult. It wouldn't be difficult if it was just on a quilt edge or something. Don't want to go through the fabric. If I'd have been just coming down a straight thing, I would have just held it to it a bit further back and then discovered how much or little I needed. Let's see. So actually what I'm going to do is bring it forward and back stitch and come off, which is what I should have done anyway. Okay. So this is what I'm trying to show you and I'm making a mess of it. Everything's going to fall off. All I'm doing is tucking this end that has just come round with me into there into that little pocket that I've almost created. And then just tucking that over. So straightening that down. I don't know if you can see this. Straightening that over, down, Pop it, popping that over, making sure it just fits on it at, at, at ease. It's not pulling it, it's not pushing it, it's not bagging up. And that's it. And then just catch that where that finished and then sew it to there. So I'll just put a clip in. Famous last words, just I've still got all this book. 
not as much as I had on the corner. And although it's gone a bit wonky in places, there will be some refining, refining, but at least I will know I've got this binding on. Get down. I shall go back a bit. <laughs> Definitely got to have a bit of strength. So I'm still on my 4.5, I'm still on my 3.5. I'm going to stitch once. And then back. See, it fights you all the time. I did have plans to make several of these. I may never make another one. Take that one out first. You dare start to creep in. I'm having no creeping in. That's it. Is that dreaded? I must feel if it's still gone. Yes. I think if you're still with me now, I'd like you to show a big hooray as I get to this point. Just getting the loose bit off so that I know I'm. So over it a little bit and back stitch. And back stitch again. And if I have to take it off, it's going in the bin. There's quite a lot of money in it, you know. Uh, when you think about oh, I think I shall sit and watch a film while I take I'll sit and watch a film while I take all these rough edges off. Or not. Right, shall we have a look at the moment of truth? Now it's very likely that I'm going to trim some of that. No, but I'll see. Okay. Let's just see. it's all caught it's a previous stitch there sticking out now you see that's the problem with doing it in a wide stitch you've got that Oh no, it got loose there. I think that's where I, I need to just go back to that. I think that's where the, yes. Uh, that bit is where I hadn't got the foot down. So I took off all the rough bit at the back that had just all looped. So this bit isn't caught. So I just need to go back up to that point but it's where the straight bit is so that's not too difficult I think but that's what I'm checking for really so a popper oh, pop a clip there a popper clip there because I just need to go back and do that and then let's check where else no idea if this is going to fold right over and cover it. It's only a two and a quarter binding. Oh. 
So first of all, I'm just going to check the stitching. I'm not going to go over to see whether it catches, whether it'll cover. That's fine, I've checked that. And just hope against hope that I have, yes, I haven't twisted this bit. So that bit has to go under there and then that bit goes over there. And it wouldn't be nice if it was all twisted in. Because I wouldn't want to be taking it off again. Yeah, that's okay. Oh, what a relief now. Let's have a look at this side. For going in. I'll take that off again for now. Yeah, I'm gonna have to trim that. But joy of joys, I've now got to go around and sew all that through all those layers <laughs> again ah. I will definitely need my glass of Asti this evening but I better not have it before it's going to look nice though isn't it I hope I hope it's going to look nice I'll sort out all this messy threads and things And then maybe I can start something else. I've got about five, seven things to do. Mm -hmm.